I never thought I'd say this, but with the new buffs, Cassidy is one of the most powerful characters in the new meta. He's incredibly efficient, capable of carrying games, and he is one of the best characters to climb with. So in this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about how to master his abilities and give you some targeted strategy that you can use to dominate your games. But do me a huge solid and smash that like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And for private coaching, check me out on my Patreon. Links will be in the description down below. Now, first off, let's talk about his kit and give you tips and tricks on every aspect of it. Now, his Peacekeeper is going to be his primary weapon, and it's going to be most efficient from that mid to close range. Yes, it did get a range buff, but still, you're not going to be sniping people across the map with it, nor do you want to challenge characters with very long effective range, like Widow or Hanzo, from max distance. Now, Cassidy's roll already gives you decisions with the character because roll not only reloads your weapon, increasing your overall damage uptime, but it also increases your survivability, not just because it allows you to dodge abilities and actually move positionally slightly, but roll gives you 50% less damage during the duration. Which is super, super important for things like Cassidy 1v1s, where if you get stuck with the sticky grenade, you can roll as it explodes to take 50% less damage, meaning you'll actually just tank a lot extra damage. And you can even survive things like Tracer's Pulse Bomb if you roll as the Pulse Bomb explodes. Now, the majority of the time, you're not going to want to roll to increase your damage uptime unless you're not going to be in a situation where you're going to need to use roll for survivability. Now, Magnetic Grenade is one of the most uh, powerful and bullshit abilities in the game, um, capable of following people around to a limited amount and uh, does a crazy amount of damage. It does 131 damage if you stick it to a target, and because if you're within a close effective range, your primer fire is going to do 70 damage with a body shot, 131 added onto that means that you're going to be able to do 201 damage with just a body shot and a stick. Which means you can just kill people outright. A lot of squishies in the game. However, characters that have above 200 HP, so characters that are tanks, obviously, Bastion, Torb, Reaper, May, Cassidy, a lot of these characters are just not going to die, so keep that in mind. And second off, if a character gets any sort of healing at all, they won't die to this combo. So characters that have automatic or natural healing, so like Baptiste or even Ana nading herself, will not die to this combo, so you're going to want to shoot them an extra time or if that person could get healed by someone else nearby they might not die so don't just try to look cool by body shotting sticking and walking away because uh if that person lives then you're in a shitty situation for sure now we could talk about Deadeye, and we will, but I'm mainly just going to roast it because it's like so bad. Like it's one of the worst ultimates in the game, especially when we talk about CC that can be used. If an Ana has sleep, if a freaking Sigma even has wall to block you off, if an Orisa has spear, which she always freaking has, Deadeye is going to get canceled. So how do we use Deadeye to get value? And I think there's two primary ways that you can use Deadeye, I guess. 2.5 the first way is to actually use deadeye when enemies are super super distracted so you could do it from an off angle you could do it while maybe a genji comes and blades your back line and you're playing somewhere different because you tracked dragon blade and you pop a blade putting him in a bad situation or maybe like a far mercy fly up really high and you pop deadeye as they do that this is some situations where you can use deadeye actually pretty efficiently other times that you can use Deadeye is if you have something that could protect you, like a shield, hypothetically, and the opponents have to come and contest the point. As they push in, you high noon behind a shield so that they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. This works even better if they have to contest because you're about to cap the point or win the Koth map, hypothetically. That's really, really strong. You can also use it as like a payload is about to cap like an actual objective. And then I said 0.5 because the other way that you could use it is just to reload. I know that that's a super sleeper way to use this ability but uh you know sometimes it's better than just popping it and dying you need to be willing to bail out of a high noon as well if it doesn't look like it's gonna get any value don't just hold it and allow yourself to be a sitting duck for the enemy because i've had games where cassidy's wouldn't really die all that much but every time they popped an ultimate they would just feed so yeah definitely don't let that be you 
Now let's talk about the five big tips and tricks that I have for you on Cassidy so that you can master this character as quickly as possible. Starting off with the most important thing to nail, the strategy of Cassidy. You need to understand that Cassidy is not a very mobile character. He's pretty clunky and he can't run away from enemies all that much. He wants to stand there, stand tall, deal damage, and uh, he's not really a flanker, nor is he a character that can quickly bail out of a bad situation. This means that most often he wants to sandwich himself between his main tank and his back line and kind of occupy that middle of the pack character where he can quickly get peeled by his team and he's outputting a crazy amount of damage putting out tons and tons of damage outputting a ton of pressure and of course looking for key pickoffs while he can take a slight off angle he doesn't really want to vary too far away from any of the rest of his team because like i said if he gets in a bad situation he can't bail out of it very easily and Unlike other characters like Soldier or Divers, where if something goes wrong, they can just dip, Cassidy cannot. So if you're going to do something like that, it needs to be all or nothing. And that puts extra pressure on what you need to accomplish when you just don't need to play that way the vast majority of the time. Now, if we combine this with the compositions that Cassidy is really good for, he's really good with comps that want to have that front line because he really wants to play right behind that front line, right? So Arissa, Ramatra, Ryan, Sigma, even Azaria is decent. All these characters are pretty good for a Cassidy, but Comps that are bad for a Cassidy would be like Wrecking Ball or even Winston or a D.Va that wants to dive in. Some of these characters are not going to work that well because he never really gets to play in a way that demands peel, nor does he have a front line that he gets to play behind when he wants to just keep outputting pressure. Now, let's talk about Nade, and this is a really important thing to understand. Nade is not a tool for you to fly into their backline and stick someone and kill them. While yes, Nade can definitely secure you a kill, you need to understand that if you fly into the enemy backline, throw your Nade, not only are you super vulnerable because you're super in the fight, but now you don't have the Nade to punish. And that's what Nade ultimately is. It's a punishment tool. If you can stay in that pocket, you know that pocket where you're just chilling behind your front line and in front of your backline in that mid part doing a ton of damage outputting a ton of pressure getting picks that's where you want to remain and you can use your nade as a punishment tool to stop anyone that wants to disrupt that whether that's a off angling dps that thinks that they can get an angle on you whether that's a genji jumping in at you or a tank that wants to burst through your front line nade is your perfect punishment tool that does a huge amount of damage and that opponents have to respect you have got to understand that even not using nade gives you value because it forces enemies to play in your effective range in that sweet spot but not having it makes you vulnerable where if you don't have nade if you use nade all of a sudden every freaking creature in the woodwork on the enemy team is going to come after you because they're not afraid of them getting naded anymore i mean you've played against the cassidy you know how scary nade is and once the cassidy uses it that is a call that everyone makes and you're just going to get jumped on out of nowhere now, what does this mean for your bad matchups? On Cassidy, the worst matchups that you have are specifically characters that actually don't care about your primary fire or your nade. So primarily characters like Widow that can far outrange you. Even characters like Hanzo can be very frustrating because these characters can play so far outside your effective range that you can't reliably threaten them at all. And your grenade, which is one of your most powerful abilities, also does nothing to them. So yeah definitely frustrating and against these characters you could be more aggressive because you're less likely to get punished based on having an aggressive position or being slightly out of position but still they're definitely a very hard matchup for you to deal with now let's talk about Cassidy's alternate fire or his right click. This is something that a lot of Cassidy's just don't do enough. It used to be really common back when you could flash fan, but uh, these days people just don't fan enough. And when you're up against wrecking balls or just tanks, you just want to output as much damage as possible as quickly as possible. Just just freaking dump bullets into them. If if a ball comes into you and he gets slept or he gets discorded and you right click him, you could just do so much damage out of nowhere. Same thing for like a Ramatra that wants to brawl you. And don't underestimate the power of fanning, rolling and fanning again, just bursting characters out of nowhere. It's super, super strong. It applies a ton of pressure and uh, it's a lot more burst damage than just like shooting them in the body over and over again. 
As a general rule of thumb, you can kind of exhaust a lot of resources onto a diver that is already on you. you like, you want to save roll and nade and even your ammo count for when a target is on top of you. But when they're on top of you, all you want to do is dump those things to get them off of you. So when a diver is on you, that's when you nade, dump ammo, roll, freaking dump more ammo, and you kind of utilize all your resources to just punish them or force them off of you as quickly as possible and then you can go back to that sweet spot where you're in your effective range kind of poking them out and you're chilling now do you think cassidy is definitely one of the best characters to learn right now he's very powerful but you have to be grinding your mechanical skill i always suggest practicing in places like Faxta and putting a certain amount of time and effort into tried free for all so you get to practice against a lot of your 1v1 matchups but definitely let me know if you have any questions about how to master this character and smash that like subscribe if you enjoy the content let me know what guide you want to see next down below and i'll see you next time